In this video we're going to be showing you, introducing to you the bodice block. Uh, here I've got the full scale and the miniature version. Um, here we have the front. Now I've got it labelled centre front here. It's also labelled front there. And the other reason that I know that this is the front and not this one is that we have these big darts coming down here. And these darts coming from the waist up to the shoulder are the bust darts. So they're big darts because we need to create a lot of fitting around the bust area. This is the side seam, this is the waist, and this is the centre front. This is the neck, the shoulder, and the armhole. Here you'll notice the diff another difference between centre front and centre back is the deepness, the depth of the neck scoop. So this one is a little bit deeper. The back is always a little bit shallower when you're looking at something that's quite fitted. The other thing that will help you remember front from back is that the back has the double notches on the armhole and the single notch on the front. The darts that we have on the back, the shoulder dart and the waist dart up here are smaller. They're just creating a little bit more fit as it comes around the back. So curving over the shoulder and then down to the waist. And this is our centre back up here. Over here is our sleeve. You can see we have a nice long grain line down the centre of the sleeve. This is the hem. This seam up here is our sleeve seam. And this is the head of the sleeve. So this section here is fitting into this armhole that will be created by sewing the side and the shoulders together. So this point here is the head that's called the sleeve head and this notch will match up with this position here, come around, the double notches will match up and then this section of the sleeve curves underneath the body like that. Over here on the other side the sleeve curves under, the single notch is matching and then this comes up to the sleeve head here. This, um, none of these have hem allowance or seam allowance, so they're our blocks. We have the name, so I've got Melanie and UTS, bodice block, sleeve, size 10, no seam allowance or hem allowance. And this is number three of three, this is two of three, and this guy here is one of three. Now the other thing to notice about our blocks to remember is that we have a drill hole positioned at the end, right at the end of the dart, so and right at bus point here. So what we need to do when we create our patterns is to move those drill holes away from the end of the dart 15 mils. Having a look over here at our little guys, you might need to zoom in to see this. So we have exactly the same information on our miniature as we do on the full scale. We have the notches, the darts, the double notch for the armhole. I've got my centre back marked and the same labelling. Over here on the centre front, we've got the single notch on the armhole, the notches for the darts, the drill hole at bus point and I've also labelled my side seams and the sleeve has all of the same information again making sure that you remember to transfer all of your notches. A quick point you might notice that we have grain line on the sleeve but we don't have grain line on the centre front and the centre back. The reason being we have a straight centre back and a straight centre front so we know that this line here is our grain line. So when we're transferring this to a pattern, we will use that position to find our grain lines. And again, the same on the miniatures over here. So now we're going to create a little bit of a pattern for this one from the block. I've got the centre front on a fold, so I'm going to assume that what we're creating will have a centre back opening. So I'm placing the centre front on my folded paper the centre back will be on a single piece and the sleeve will be on a single piece. So starting with lining up the centre front with the folded paper so that's accurate. Pop a weight on it. I need The weight is very big so I'll need to move around. Okay, so holding down 
marking the notches, carefully following the shape of the block. And where it's curling up, I'm holding it down, tracing around. Oops, move that out of the way. Okay, and marking in only one drill hole on this one, so I've got that now. Now the first thing to do is to draw in the stitching lines of the darts. And I'm extending the dart arms into the seam allowance. Next, we'll do our back over here. Don't forget your drill holes. Okay, and I've got my second drill hole. Um, I'm going to take that off. Now, it might be an idea before you continue to mark front and back so that you're not getting confused. So I'm just going to write centre back here and centre front here so that I don't get my front and backs mixed up when I do the labelling. And drawing on the grain, the stitching line of the darts. Okay, to turn these guys into pattern, uh, there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to add seam allowance all the way around. We need to add our grain lines and finish the labelling. The other element that is important I mentioned very briefly um, in the intro is moving the drill hole away from the end of the dart. We don't have drill holes on patterns at the end of the dart because when we use drill holes we're actually physically creating a hole in the fabric. And if you stitch down to a position where there's a hole in the fabric, you're going to create a problem in the garment um, and it will probably be need to need to be mended. So what we do is we move the drill holes a little bit out of the way. So I've got the center, the center of my dart here is marked by the point, the shaping of this point and I draw a little line from the end of the dart to the center point and then I move the position of the drill hole up 15 millimeters from that end to here and circle it. And then I do the same for this dart down here. So there's the center of the dart found by the shaping and then extend it and 15 millimeters up And then we'll do the same thing over here. So I've got the center of the dart marked. If your dart, um, not on these necessarily, but in general, if you find that there is not a lot of shaping in the dart and you need to find the center of the dart, you simply measure the width. So this one is 18 and so 9 mils is the center. So if the shaping isn't showing you the center, then you just measure it and halve it to find that position and then moving up 15 mils is the new drill hole and the last one 15 mils from the end. Okay, now I'm adding seam allowance. So for the waist, the side seam, the shoulder and the armhole, I'm going to add 12 mils. Shaping carefully around the dart. Always remember never to flatten out the shaping with your seam allowances. And extending the stitching line into the corners of the seam allowance. So move your, curve your rule around in little movements so that you keep the 
shaping and the accurate shaping of the armhole and the parallel line of the stitching. Now our neckline will be finished with a 6mm seam allowance. So 6mm on your grading ruler is 3 lines because each of the lines on the grading ruler represents 2mm. Which is how you also find your 12mm seam allowance. Okay, extending the stitching lines. Don't forget to transfer your armhole notches as well. Alrighty. Now we'll do the centre back. So the centre back, I'm imagining we would put an invisible zipper in. So that needs 12 mil seam allowance. 12 mils on the waist because what we do on the front we must do to the back as well. Twelve mils on the side seam. Twelve mils on the armhole. The tighter the curve, the smaller the movements of the ruler will be. Transferring my notches across, extending the stitching line into the seam allowance. Twelve mils on the shoulder. and six mils on our neckline. All right, the last one will be our sleeve. Before I take it off, I'm going to mark the grain line at a couple of points. And now we're adding our seam allowances. The seam allowance will be 12 mils on the side seam. On the armhole, it needs to be 12 mils as well to match the armhole that we have. Sorry, the sleeve head needs to match the armhole. So 12 mils on the side, 12 on the sleeve head and 3 centimetres on the hem. Just a reminder um, that you guys will be doing your pattern making in pencil. I'm only using a pen to make it visible um, on camera. But when you're working at home, you're always using pencil so that you can erase mistakes or processes that, that you've used to develop your pattern.
When you've finalised your pattern and you're presenting your final pattern either in paper or in card or in your journal, at that point when you're completely confident, then you use pen to finish your labelling grain lines. Okay, now three centimetres on the hem. I'm just going to swing this around. Now, rather than extending like this down to the hem, what we actually need to do is to fold up this line and trace the side seam so that we get the correct shaping on our hem. So I'm going to cut a little bit here and fold along this finish line. And then using my tracing wheel to trace up the cut edge and the stitching line. And now I can draw those lines on. So this is a technique that you use not only for sleeves, but you can use it for hems on any part of a garment. It can be the hem on a, or a facing on a jacket or a shirt, or it could be the hem on a skirt or a pair of pants. So we just need to make sure that when you are folding your hem up, it matches the width of the position where you will be stitching it to in the garment. If it comes narrower, then you'll be top stitching this to your hem and you'll find that you will start to gather in this section here. So it's a really important part of finishing a garment properly is making sure that the pattern fits. Okay, um, I am going to cut them out and then we will finish the labelling. Uh, for the centre front, because we've created the pattern on the fold, we need to put some pins in it so that it doesn't move around and become asymmetrical as we're cutting it out. The other thing to be aware of when you're cutting is trying to create really nice, long, slow cuts. So a nice cut like that, as opposed to like that will help create smooth lines. The other thing that helps both in cutting paper and card and fabric is not cutting to the tips of your scissors. When you cut to the tips and then you go in, you create little jagged points. So trying to keep it smooth and not going to the end of your scissors uh, will help your cutting. So you'll notice that I don't go to the end unless I'm at a point. Um, also anchoring the paper and holding it down or the fabric when you're cutting can also be helpful to creating smooth and accurate cuts. Okay, before I unfold it, make sure that I've transferred all of the stitching lines across to the corners and the position of the darts. The other thing to transfer across to the other side is my drill holes. So I'm going to transfer the drill holes and I'm going to do a little hole just to make sure that I've got this junction accurately located as well, but that will not be a drill hole. Actually, before I take it apart, I can notch the notches that will be on both sides. So on both sides of the bodice block, we'll have our dart notches and our armhole notch. The other notches, we, the, for the seam allowance, we will work around 
um, clockwise after we've opened it. So I've got the two notches there, the armhole notch. See how I am trying to follow the direction of the line? Okay, now we open it up and we're ready to finish our labelling. I'm going to draw on the dart arms. Circle the drill holes. Mark in a centre front notch and the stitching lines in the corners. And we have completed our bodice pattern.